Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and did you know that an estimated 94% of life on our planet is aquatic life? Oceans cover 70% of our planet. They are vast and fascinating, and today I'm going to share with you many facts about them. The Earth didn't always contain oceans. Experts don't know exactly where the water came from initially. Maybe ancient aliens, but probably not. Most believe it was always here. It just started out as very small amounts below the surface and over time expanded. Because we know there were people in modern day Australia by around 40,000 BCE, it's believed that people have been crossing the Pacific since at least then, although we don't know exactly how. But experts are fairly sure that people could canoe very long distances since at least about 3,000 BCE. It was actually Ferdinand Magellan who named the Pacific Ocean many centuries later. He crossed part of it between 15 and 1521, and he named it after the Latin word for tranquil, even though he did die on that expedition uh, via poison arrow. Then we have the Atlantic Ocean. Believe it or not, for about a century, many people were obsessed with being the first to cross it via hot air balloon. Between 1859 and 1978, there were 18 attempts. Seven balloonists died, but in 1978, the Double Eagle II made it from Maine to France in 137 hours. If you're wondering what happened to the Double Eagle I, things didn't go so well, they ditched just off the coast of Iceland, which I guess doesn't count as Europe. There's a spacecraft cemetery in the Pacific Ocean by New Zealand. Various old spacecrafts and space stations are there. Apparently it's just a good, safe place to put them. In 2011, a team found something known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly while treasure hunting for shipwrecks near Sweden. It's a rock that's about 200 feet in diameter, but appears constructed and man-made. But experts believe it probably isn't the work of humans, and it's a geological formation, or perhaps some sort of of glacial deposit or underwater volcano, it's anomalous. Speaking of strange things underwater, in the 1960s, a series of divers, or oceanauts, lived in underwater villages for up to a month as part of a research project conducted by Jacques Cousteau. Researchers found that living underwater may have caused the divers' cuts to heal faster and their hair to grow slower. But let's take a step back and talk about some ocean basics. The average ocean depth is 2.3 miles, according to calculations done by the National Ocean Service. But the the deepest part of the ocean is much further down than that. It's known as the Challenger Deep, and it can be found in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. The floor of the Challenger Deep is about 36,200 feet below the surface, which is almost seven miles. That means it's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. And amazingly, it's not totally silent down there. Researchers have managed to get microphones toward the bottom of the Challenger Deep, and not only can you hear noise from whales and other aquatic life, you can also hear man-made sounds like ship engines. Moving on to another huge thing in the ocean, icebergs. Some of them appear massive, but they're actually much bigger than they look because usually 90% of an iceberg is underwater. And during the peak of the last ice age, about 21,000 years ago, there were huge icebergs in southern Florida. They often floated down the Atlantic Ocean, and most would melt around modern-day South Carolina, but some made it all the way to Florida. And then they would melt because, of course, for icebergs and people, Florida is where you go to die. Humans have been using the ocean for power conversion since at least 600 CE. Even that far back in history, people were able to build dams and water wheels for power. And speaking of impressive feats, as of 2015, a Canadian man named Harold Hackett has sent almost 8,000 messages in a bottle. Amazingly, he's received about 4,300 responses. He puts his address in the messages. He also gets about 150 holiday cards from his pen pals every year. Well, you gotta have hobbies, otherwise you're forced to look directly at the meaningless of human existence. But anyway, that's nothing compared to 28,800 rubber ducks. That's how many rubber ducks fell into the North Pacific Ocean in 1992, thanks to a shipping container accident. Some of them even floated into the Atlantic Ocean's coastlines, including Maine's. Slightly off topic, but to quote Mr. Weasley, what exactly is the function of a rubber duck? Moving on, there's an interesting thing known as the Milky Sea Phenomenon, which was primarily fishermen folklore for centuries, but now we know that some seas actually do appear to glow thanks to bacteria. There are a few underwater museums. The Museo Atlantico by the Canary Islands is a museum of 400 underwater sculptures that you can snorkel through, and near Cancun, there's one with 500 sculptures that you can see while scuba diving. And since there are underwater museums, of course, there is also an underwater restaurant. At a Conrad resort in the Maldives, there's an all-glass restaurant about 16 feet below the ocean surface. Let's finish by talking about some of the creatures that live in the ocean. Catfish have about 100,000 taste buds. A large one might have 175,000. Humans have around 10,000. Speaking of impressive numbers, the tusk of a narwhal is actually a tooth with 10 million nerve endings. And the 
ocean sunfish, which are often found in tropical or mild locations, can lay up to 300 million eggs in a single batch. Reef stonefish have 13 spines, which also happen to contain potentially deadly venom. Some fish who live in oceans around Antarctica have proteins in their bodies that function similar to antifreeze. That's how they're able to live in freezing cold water without having their insides stop working. Sea coral can be used in human bone graft surgeries. When bone tissue needs to be transplanted, the coral has to be altered a bit to make it dissolve after its work is done. If it doesn't, bacteria may start to grow, so researchers have made it biodegradable. Giant squids have been mysterious throughout much of history. In fact, the first time one was photographed alive was in 2004. Japanese researchers baited a camera with squid, shrimp, and a strobe light. An earlier attempt actually involved attaching a camera to a sperm whale. And speaking of scary creatures that lurk underwater, a group of stingrays is called a fever. Pufferfish create patterns that look like crop circles on the ocean floor as part of a mating ritual. The circles reach about seven feet in diameter and are created by male pufferfish, and then the females check out the designs and decide whether to mate. Jellyfish actually use a suction maneuver to get from place to place rather than swimming. By twisting, they make a vacuum in the water, which pulls them forward. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you that it's a misconception that no fish can swim backwards. In fact, in particular, many eels can swim backwards. Thanks for watching Metal Floss video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Let me know in comments what your favorite fish is. Mine's Dory, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.